Yo, what's going on guys? And today we have a nice little video. Thank you to the athletic for this little thing. So basically, wait, let's make sure we shout out Sam and Mac for this and let's scroll down. And basically there was a little part of this article at the end that I really liked. Other high profile NBA stars who've asked out since 2010. Editors note, the list below is intended to highlight the most notable star players to force a trade since 2010. It is not all inclusive. I want to hear your thoughts down below. It starts off with the Carmelo Anthony trade, and we'll talk about old high profile trades to basically give us a guideline how long these type of trades take to last. And I want to hear your thoughts down below. For me, all these trades happened during my NBA fandom. I very much remember the Carmelo one. I remember being on like, I believe it was like 2K11 this was happening, and I would trade the rosters to get it because, you know, the trade hadn't happened yet. And, oh, God, 2K11, what a good game. Now, let's talk about one of your thoughts down below. Only 6% of you guys subscribe. We're about to hit 8,000. We're about to hit 8,000. We're like 200 away, almost to 10,000. So let's get right into it. Let's talk about it. Here we go. Stay hydrated. Hydration is key. Now, Carmelo Anthony. Me being from Baltimore, and I so many people who played with Carmelo. So Carmelo asked out in late August 2010. Anthony tells the Denver Nuggets he wants out. Nets, Clippers, Warriors, Houston Rockets, Charlotte Hornets are all mentioned as the most likely possibilities. The New York Knicks possibilities reported as unlikely. Masai Yuri, who has headed the Toronto Raptors front office since 2013, and whose Raptors are known to be in the mix for Durant, was hired as Denver's you know, general manager not long before Anthony's trade request and ultimately led the deal that sent him to New York. And he was traded on February 21st, 2011. The time it took was six months. And Anthony was entering the final year of his five-year $78.8 million deal when he asked out and was just a few months away from free agency when he was finally dealt to the Knicks. But I remember when they did trade for him, he basically gave them his word that he was going to resign regardless of what happened. So with that being said, you need to, you know, factor in that this trade, he gave his word that he was going to resign. So I don't think this one's very inclusive. Now let's go over to Chris Paul. This one was a doozy when it happened. So Chris Paul, this was with the lockout season nearing, and he tells basically he wants to be traded to the New York Knicks to team up with Carmelo Anthony. And the Hornets at the time, who were the New Orleans Hornets, they basically said, F it, we'll send you to a deal. He ended up being, he requested defense December 1st, and he was traded December 14th. But everybody remembers that, if you're young, you might not remember, but the original deal was to the Lakers, That and this was a deal that sent, I forget, was the Rockets the third team in it? Because it would have sent, I believe, God, I can't even remember what the trade was, but it was it was a trade that was finalized like a week before the the actual trade that got. And Chris Paul, I think, you know, Evan, I don't even think Evan, like, because they got Evan Gordon in the original deal. And I don't know why this deal didn't happen, but it was basically, I think it would have been like Dwight Howard, Chris Paul, and Kobe all would have been on the, the Lakers together. And I guess David Stern didn't want that. And Paul was entering the third season of a four-year, $63.6 million deal with a fourth-year player option when he asked out. Now, during that same time, and this is why everyone thought the Lakers were going to like get a deal. Maybe the Lakers were in on this deal. I don't even remember. Someone talk, comment down below what the trade was. I could Google it right now, but I don't give a fuck to. But Dwight Howard, I remember when this all was going down, everyone's like, okay, it's going to be the Lakers with Dwight Howard, Chris Paul, and Kobe, and Paul Gasol. But Paul Gasol might have been in that deal. I can't remember. I think it might have been around Andrew Bynum. Everybody was really hyped about Andrew Bynum back then, and then his knees just gave out. Now, Dwight Howard asked out on December 10th, then stayed, saying he wouldn't opt out and signs a waiver. Stays March 15, 2012. Then asked out again June 30th, 2012. And then on August 10th, he was traded. So, you know, the time elapsed from the initial ask out minus the time between when he signed the waiver to when he asked out again was three and a half months. And Howard was in the fourth year of a five-year, $83 million. It's so funny how cheap these deals are compared to that. Like the five-year deal is like what Kelton Johnson signed. I think Kelton Johnson signed a four-year, $80 million deal. And he was ending into the end during the final year of his deal. A lot of the things you notice with this is guys are being traded in either near the end of their deal or in the final year of their deal. Like Paul George right here. Paul George was in the middle of a third year, you know, midway through the third year 
not in the middle, but in the third year of a five-year deal. And he was only making 91 million. That's freaking crazy. And this was back in 2017. And he basically asked out February, got and wanted he basically said he was going to the Lakers, got traded to OKC in 20 in June. So that took four months. That one was a weird situation with the Paul George one. Kyrie told Dan Gilbert he wanted to go to the Celtics. And basically a month later in 2017, he goes to the Celtics and he was in the third year of a five-year $94 million extension. And Kawhi, he asked out for San Antonio and San Antonio did this quick. And he said he wanted to go to the Lakers. They sent him to Toronto and he was entering the final year of his deal because he had a player option when he asked out. And we all knew he wasn't going to accept that. And then Jimmy Butler asked out for a trade. And then in September and like six weeks passed by, and I think the this would have happened quicker if the T-Wolves wouldn't have asked, like, try to save the relationship so for so long. Until he basically told them go F themselves and made it freaking awful. And he was basically on the final year of his deal because he also had a player option. And then you had the same thing. Basically, Davis was the third year in his five-year deal. And he basically said he was going to leave. He wasn't going to resign. And he wanted to play for the Lakers. And if it wasn't going to be the Lakers, it was going to be the Knicks, Bucks, or Clippers. And that took four and a half months where we knew he was going to the Lakers. And then James Harden. This one was funny. James Harden took two months. He asked out, and then he made it really weird. He was in the second year of a four-year deal. And then, of course, you know, 13 months later, he, he wants out again. He got traded to the Sixers. And Ben Simmons took five and a half months. So what does this article tell us? What does history tell us? The average length of time with, you know, all these star players from the time they requested a trade to the time they were traded took 88.4 days, which is two months and eight days and a half. And Durant is six weeks into the saga with Anthony Carmelo Anthony taking six months as the longest and Ben Simmons being the second longest. So right now, this is being dragged out. So something that happened was only 10 players cited only Simmons, who was entering year two and had four years left on his deal, asked out with more than two seasons left. Okay, nine of those guys, five asked out entering their second to last season, and then the other four were heading into their last season. So in theory, Durant has four years left on his deal, which should incentivize suitors to put even more on the table to secure services. Now, another thing is nine had preferred de preferred destinations that were either known at the time or were revealed after the deal was done. Simmons was the outlier. Of the group, four were traded to a team that was known to be a top friend preference, Davis, Harden, and Irving, while the five, Paul, Howard, Leonard, Butler, and George were not. So, like, after you know we we don't even know i just thought this was like a nice little exercise to discuss like what potentially could happen and i hope you guys did enjoy it it was a good eight minute